Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Talk of Fame podcast. I'm Kaya Matsumi, and today joining us on Talk of Fame podcast is Nashville-based singer-songwriter Caleb Hearn, who released a single today, actually, called Birthdays and Funerals. Welcome to the podcast, Caleb, and congrats on your new single. Thank you so much uh, for having me, and yeah, I, I'm so excited to be here, and thank you for the congratulations on the release. Um, yeah, it's, it's a good day. Mm -hmm, for sure. Like, like, did you celebrate today for your new release or did you kind of have like, a little like low key chill out there as usual? Yeah, honestly, um, I I got to celebrate a little bit um, with a lot of like, um, like fans and friends and people that were like really engaged on this release last night over Zoom. So we had like a little listening party. And then um, and then today I've just been like, honestly, just like checking the socials as one does and all that kind of stuff but oh, mostly just like you know normal day i'm just kind of chilling out i've celebrated in the past for certain releases and i kind of wanted to just like you know take a chill day and it feels good that it's out there in the world now and it's just you know just kind of low-key <laughs> mm -hmm, i love that like i know like with every like release it's like i do i actually want to celebrate and is the releasing or just like why do i should get why should i go out all out each time I release. Really yeah, it. it's like once a month, so it's like it gets a yeah, lot. Especially yeah, especially if it's like an EP. Like, are you releasing an EP right in November? I am. Yeah, November. Um, it'll be an EP. So yeah. Ooh, so like, how like do you plan on celebrating for that like a bigger type of thing, or do you just like like kind of another like low key type of thing? Because yeah, I know like, EP is like more of a bigger celebration than a right. like, single type of thing. No, totally. Honestly, I honestly have not given it much thought we've we've been focused so much on the music and and the marketing behind it and everything like that and just getting everything ready and delivered and um yeah I think now it's a good point I think now it's like time to shift gears and like into like how we're gonna celebrate it who knows we might we might do something fun in Nashville and and try to do something like that but at the same time um uh shortly after the EP I'm I'm doing like a small tour so that will be really small, intimate, um, only like three dates. So um, it's going to be just, but it, I mean, I kind of can serve that as a celebration as well. So. Ooh, that's not bad at all. Like, honestly, yeah. like if I had this celebration, I would just go on tour and just be like, forget it. I'm just going forget to Forget it, right? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. like, how did you kind of get kind of restart as like a singer songwriter? Yeah, um, that's a good question. I um, I got a guitar when I was like 11, 10 or 11 years old. I can never really remember, but for Christmas. And I had a cousin who um, was much better than me and still probably is, honestly, at guitar and uh, showed me just some simple chords. And so I just like started like writing on my own, just started writing like I was still am, but a huge fan of Taylor Swift. And I was just like writing these love songs and these sad breakup songs or whatever. And, and then I went into high school and all that, and it wasn't the cool thing to do to make music really. So I was, you know, big and in, big into sports and I like, kind of put music to the side for a bit. And then I met a friend uh, junior year of high school who was also interested in music. And we kind of started doing it as like a side thing, um, really making pop, rap, everything you could think of just like make, just having fun with it. Right. And, um, and we got a little bit of like traction during that high school time. Like we had some small news outlets and stuff. Um, so that made us feel good and made us like really develop a passion for it during that time. And then after high school, I, I still never thought like it was something that I would be doing full time, but it was something I really loved. And I felt like once I graduated high school, I was like, okay, Caleb, I gotta grow up. Like music isn't gonna pay the bills so I got a job and all of that and during that time that's when I really noticed like how much I missed it and how much it needed to be a part of my life and um so I during the COVID year um I uh had some time off from work and I just like really focused on music and got back into it and during that time with the use of like TikTok and Instagram and stuff like that I was able to um you know start and start engaging with like a small audience and um and from there it started growing and then I decided not to go back to work and just like really go for it. And then the end of the COVID year, I had um my first song do like well enough to where I could like, you know, pay bills and, and live on my own and that kind of thing. So and then from there it was just like a kind of a snowball effect 
and um, I just kind of stayed with it. And so I guess it's been um, almost four years now of doing it full time, which is, I mean, every time I think about that, it's an extreme blessing. And I'm so, so excited to be able to do that. Um, but yeah, now it just feels like normal life. And it's it's really cool. That's really awesome. You even moved down to Nashville two years ago, which is absolutely insane. You know, it's yeah. like four years ago, like you wouldn't like think like you pursue like a singer songwriter career. Then two years like or more later, you moved to Nashville. Yeah, to a home of really country, like music scene, country music is really a huge thing, especially for like this. Like, Nashville is really like a songwriter's town. Like everyone, everyone, especially in the songwriters. Yeah. Group. 100%. It's so true. So true. There's so much talent here and just people that are writing country songs, but also other stuff. Like it's the scene is so big. Mm, it really is. Like, like I remember like convincing my parents to really just take me down to Nashville for at least a weekend because I'm like, yeah. I'm a huge country music fan. So I'm like, especially with that Nashville country, like Nashville is really the like scene of country music. So mm-hmm. I'm like, Let's go down to Nashville. It's, I, I know it's not too far. Well, it's kind of far, but it's not too far from where I am. It's great. It looks great from Spania. But it's like, like what's being a country music fan, like you guys, like you, if you're a country music fan, you really have to go to Nashville. Even yeah. if you're a songwriter, you have to go to Nashville for a weekend or something to perform. Oh, something. 100%. Yeah. I mean, I take trips to LA, but there's a lot of people from LA that are taking trips here. So it's good. good you know, it goes back and forth in New York as well. And it's just, yeah it's become um, a, a huge hub for music. Oh, really? But um, okay, tell us kind of more about like your new single, Birthdays and Funerals, that just came out today. Yeah, um, so that song, um, obviously extremely excited about it. There was a lot of hard work that went into it. Um, I, I had an idea of like a title for a song, Birthdays and Funerals. I had it written down for a long time. And I kept trying to write on my own like, something that would you know uh fit that title because normally i try to come up with like song concepts first um but this time it was like this title seemed really cool to me and i was like this could really mean something um deep and and whatever and i kept trying to write it and every time i would just run into this wall of like this doesn't make sense this is too complex this is too much um and then i was in a writing session in nashville with uh, a guy named david hodges um, Ricky Manning and Dan Swank. Dan Swank, someone who I'd worked with before. And so I was really excited. And we went in and we nothing was really happening. And I was like, well, guys, I do have this title that I've been trying to write for a long time. And um, they loved it. And, um, you know, I think it was uh, Ricky, actually, who was kind of like, I think we're just overthinking it, you know, like, it's it's not as complex as we're making it out to be. And like, um, so we just kind of thought about like how birthdays and funerals is just metaphors for, you know, the best of the best and the worst of the worst. Um, and and then it just felt like a love song. And I'm kind of going through a period of my life, too, where um, I got engaged a few months ago. And so I'm in a relationship that I never imagined um, I'd be in. And it's it's incredible. And it's a journey and just so many exciting new things for me. And uh, so it really just hit close to home to be able to be to be able to write a love song to some to to someone that I love more than anything and make it like hey you know like I want every every part of you I want the I want the birthdays I want the funerals I want the the metaphor of the good and the bad with that person always so it it felt really good once we were able to finally make it come to life oh I love that and congratulations on getting engaged that's amazing thank you thank you so much I appreciate but- that like how does um the kind of this song kind of showcase the EP that's coming on November? Yeah, um, I think what's cool about it is um, I released an EP last year, and that was an EP that is called "We're Getting Older," and that EP was so like I love that EP, but there was there was a totally different narrative behind that, and it was basically me looking in my past and kind of you know reflecting a lot being like, okay, you know, this happened, this happened, and this is how I'm trying to get over it and all these things. And that's just where I was in life at that time. Um, And then this EP is just a totally different narrative. I think that everything about this EP is looking forward. And that's what's really cool about it. I think like there's, um, you know, there's 
there's it's a very short small ep but there's three songs on it and i'm not going to give the titles out yet but um every song including birthdays and funerals is present time and looking up and looking more in a positive direction um which i think is a really cool spot to be in mm -hmm. really but like it really is but, like when you really like change up things like from your previous eps it just kind of shows like how like kind of transforming like your music is going to be like did you um write the ep based off of your experiences or was it all like kind of like a fantasy yeah, I mean, this EP is super, super personal. Um, I think it's 1000% based on experiences, birthdays and funerals being um, this love story that I'm literally living out every day. And then um, the other two are just um, the, kind of the same way. Like they're uh, not love songs, but basically thoughts that are going through my head right now um, that uh, are kind of descriptive of the place that I'm at. So it's it's very personal. It's um, probably the opposite of fantasy. Honestly, it's very real. Mm -hmm. I know, like with me, like I have, like I know, like a lot of artists love to make fantasy, but I know, like I know, with so many people as well, love personal songs, whether it's like love songs, you know, maybe anxiety songs or yeah, you know, it's sports songs. I know with Morgan Wallen, you released Ninety Eight Braves, which is you know about the Braves, but it's yeah. like. When you see those personal songs, I know for me, it's like I do love personal songs to be able to connect to those songs, kind of live out those experiences through, of course, the singer's lens, but also your own lens, which I like. Yeah, totally, totally. But how is this um, EP kind of different from your previous EPs? Um, I would say that, you know, I, I guess other than we're getting older, I don't think I've really had another EP. I guess I was like kind of the debut EP, but... I mean, honestly, I feel like I feel like the last question kind of answered this one too. It's like, I think this one is just different in the sense of like where I'm at. Like I'm in a place now where it's like, I have a lot, I, I don't pretend to have anything figured out, but I feel like I have more figured out in my life than I did then. So I'm at a place now where my eyes are much more open and I can see, you know, over the last year and a half to two years, this healing, process of like so many things in my life that have happened from from childhood to relationships to losing people all of these things that um I guess just like define who I am today I feel like are coming out in this EP and, and it's kind of a message of hope and encouragement um to others but also just myself mm -hmm. that's seriously awesome and like how does um this EP even the song kind of explore that idea of a partnership built not only on sharing life's joyful moments, but also confronting life's most, most challenging trials together? Yeah, um, that's a good question. <laughs> that's a really good question. Um, let's see, how does this explore, say it one more time, <laughs> if you don't mind. Not at all. And like, how does it kind of explore the idea of partnership built not only on sharing life's joyful moments, but also confronting life's most challenging trials together? Yeah, um, that's, yeah, it's a great question. Um, I think that it really does, I think birthdays and funerals is a good example, honestly. I think that it does um, a really good job in, or the songs, I guess, kind of in a whole, do a really good job in like sharing this feeling. It's more of like a feeling in the music of this, um, these trials and, and things that people go through on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and then kind of flipping them. So like even birthdays and funerals as a title in itself, when you look at it, you're like, oh, that probably is gonna be a sad, sadder song. Um, and it's actually the opposite. And then, you know, like every, I feel like every title of these, of these three songs that are coming out this year are um, kind of like flipped on their heads. It's, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a message that could be flipped in a very negative way, but they're just kind of, switched over into a positive way so I think that's um I guess if that answers your question a little bit yeah it does yeah like yeah. like like even if it's like over to a positive it's not bad at all but um yeah like how did um working with David Hogan and Dan Swain kind of help your process of writing the EP or birthdays and funerals yeah no totally um I think they both um first off they're both incredible producers and writers um, so they were really able on the on the sonic side, like the music side, 
um, were able to give it a feel that I hadn't really tapped into yet, which was really cool because at the time I didn't really know um, when we wrote the song Birthdays and Funerals, I didn't really know what um, where, where I was going in the sense of like, am I dropping an EP or an album or just doing singles for the rest of the year? But when we wrote Birthdays and Funerals, there was like a clear direction, even on day one, that felt like, okay, this is a project. Like this feels like a a moment or a um, period of time that I can kind of sink myself in and, and kind of make the audience feel that same feeling. Um, so I think Birthdays and Funerals, writing that with them and Ricky was like a really cool, like, you know, description of uh of my life at the time and it just and it just felt right and and then the title was really cool so we were like man this feels like the title of a project you know yeah. uh, it doesn't feel like just a random single that you throw out um so yeah they were really really helpful in the sense of just providing that security because i was really like at a place of confusion a little bit like what where do i go <laughs> it's funny i have a song called where do we go from here and um <laughs> like where do we go from here though and um and uh, yeah, so like that's kind of the place I was at. And then writing that with them, there was so much, you know, you know, so many times where they were like, dude, this is this is a project, man. This feels this feels like something bigger than just, um, you know, another one of those songs that you write every day. So it was cool. I mean, there was a lot of validation I got from them. Mm -hmm. Especially with the name Birthdays and Funerals, like that name is honestly I'm not saying that because I'm doing an interview, but I'm just saying it from my personal perspective, birthdays and funerals, like the names, this actually this fire though, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank really, you so like much. once people hear the name birthdays and funerals, they're like, okay, well, I kind of have this? this song on now. Right, 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 right. It's, exactly. Like, it's so catchy. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for that. Absolutely. And I, I, if you could say it, I'm not sure if you could, but how many um songs are going to be on uh, EP? Uh, a total of three a total of three so it's very it's very short um it's just kind of wrapping up the year but I will say that there is I have I'm in a place now where it's not this isn't normally a this isn't the norm for me but I have a lot of songs that um are being finished up and stuff so kicking off next year we have a bigger project um in play so um, but yeah, for the rest of this year, we have um, two more singles, birthdays and funerals, and then two more to wrap the year. And then we're doing like a small tour as well. Ooh, sweet. Are you going around the East Coast or are you traveling all over? Um, I So I've been, I actually have been doing so much on the West Coast recently. Um, so, or like Midwest to West Coast. So for this, I'm going to keep it like, I'm going to keep it East Coast. I'm going to be able to, for the first time ever, I'm going to get to play um, live in my home state, which I've never gotten to do, which I'm excited about. So um, and then there's also Georgia and then there's Nashville. So Ooh. those three places that I'm really excited to play in. Ooh, those are good places. And maybe next one can come to Pennsylvania. We're yeah, gonna... yeah. I still need to. Yeah, I still need to hit a little bit more of the Midwest and then I need to hit uh, a little more north. Those Ooh. are the two spots that I haven't been able to get to yet. So hey, all 50 states. Then you'll be all that's stuff. the goal that's the goal but how can we like in your opinion i know with the um the ep and stuff it always kind of confronts most challenging trials together especially family wise covid wise and so many things like in your opinion like how can we kind of confront like most challenging trials together whether it's family social media like yeah anything? yeah i love that question um i think honestly where it, where it kind of starts and uh, of course I'm not you know um I'm not like a world peace leader by any means <laughs> but um but I would love to be and I feel like I feel like where it starts is just the just the general recognition that we are all human beings and we are all equal and we are all you know um created by design and and we're we're all here to make this the place that we're living a better place and i think that's where we go wrong so many times is you know someone says something that is different than what you agree with and the immediate thing is oh i can't i can't you know associate with that person now and i just think that's where a lot of things go off the deep end and wrong is because mm -hmm. we create these divisions between us um 
just based on opinions. And, um, and I think that, you know, that's the beauty of living in America too, is just yeah. that we have, you know, um, the freedom of opinion and, and that kind of thing. And I think that recognizing that we are all human beings and we are all here to hopefully make life better and just general love for everyone. Um, I think that's something that is kind of a lost art in a sense, and it's the simplest and easiest thing to do. And I think that's kind of where it, uh, where it starts is to, to, to take on trials and stuff together. We have to be on the same page about respect for each other and love. So. Okay. I really totally agree on that though. But um, yeah, like, like you said, like, I know with living in America, you know, if you say to wherever you live, like, I know a lot of people like to judge based off of someone's opinions on, you know, I don't know if it's like maybe politics, for example, um, religion, or what you kind of feel about certain things or what you want to pursue. And it's oh. just like, even though we might not kind of agree, I know it's like, views or opinions it's just like it's sometimes we just even have to push together whether it's family friends social media because I know like a lot of people like to judge and kind of you know push people away based off this opinion or saying but then even yeah. like you said it's kind of like you should kind of stick together even though you may not agree in that certain point totally yeah could not agree but, more. yeah and like how long was kind of the process to create this EP um, so I think, actually, I think the second, actually, it's funny that I think the third song on the EP was the first one that I wrote. Um, and then birthdays and funerals was after that. So it's, it's cool. I, I it was really just like the start of this year. So it was really probably January, February. So I guess, February, March, April, May, June, probably like seven, eight months mm -hmm. of, of hard work. Um, and, you know, and during that time, like I said, like, we got a lot of other songs too, that felt like you know, next year, bigger project. And then these three are the ones that stood out to me as a cohesive um, project for this year. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it was definitely took seven to eight months. It obviously didn't take seven to eight months just for the three songs. But like I said, there's there's other ones, but um, but I wanted to save those a little bit. So, mm -hmm. I mean, who knows? It might be added some work, you know? You yeah, know, exactly. You know, exactly. Moment. Yep, totally. But the last thing I basically have for you, I might as well end it on a little hard question type of thing. But if you could yeah. choose one song from the EP to sing for the rest of your life or to sing for a certain period of time, what would it be? Birthdays and funerals. I have to say it. Um, it, it it's a it's an easy question for me just because I feel like sonically it's so um, it sounds just like an anthem. And I feel like it's a song that. Is high energy and I love like performing it and singing it. Um, but also just more than that, it's um, it means so much to me. And I think the other two also mean the world to me as well. But this one is just um, really, really special and, and just where I'm at in life and who it's about for me. And um, yeah, I just love seeing the reaction of, you know, people applying that to their own lives and that kind of thing. So yeah. Mm -hmm. that's absolutely amazing and everyone make sure to go stream birthdays and funerals wait is, can you like like listen to it wherever you get like your music or is there any specific platforms that you can listen yeah you can listen to it anywhere um it also has a music video so that is um out for everyone to listen to we spent so much time on that um a few weeks back and i'm so excited for that to be out so it's on youtube with the music video spotify apple music everything so mm -hmm. Awesome. And everyone go listen to the song. It's absolutely awesome. I couldn't recommend it anymore. And thank you so much, Kayla, for coming on to get time to chat about birthdays and funerals and about your new album come out in November. It was so fun chatting with you. And, and if you ever need help with anything, feel free to reach out or, or anything. I'd love to help out. Thank you so much. You're incredible. I'm honored to be here. So yeah, very nice to meet you. Of course. Nice to meet you as well. I hope you have a good rest of your day, Kayla. Yes, of course. Thank you. Of course, bye.